By all rights, Ruiner is the kind of game I should love. Taking place in the dystopian cyberpunk future of Rancock, Ruiner places you in the shoes of a mysterious mask-wearing protagonist. Against your will, a hacker named Wizard has hacked into you and is forcing you to embark on a bloody mission to kill the boss of heaven, an all-encompassing organization that pretty much owns the entire city. Right off the bat, Ruiner feels like it's doing the cyberpunk theme justice. It certainly has the look down to a T. The protagonist's mask, for example, cycles through imagery and words ranging from threats and puppies to the infamous blue screen of death. Enemies in the opening tutorial mission look like goons straight out of Ghost in the Shell, all angular sunglasses and padded suit jackets. The level itself? A mechanical nightmare made of steel, pipes, and ominous machinery, drenched in atmosphere, warning lights pulsing between the shadows. But outside of the way it looks, this opening level shows promise in the gameplay department. With a twin-stick control scheme and an isometric perspective, the game has you quickly getting to grips with the finer points of bashing guys to death with a crowbar. Not to mention dodging out of the way of explosive mines and even incoming gunfire with a rather useful dash ability. Further down the line, you'll also get acquainted with an equally useful shield, deflecting attacks at the expense of a draining energy gauge. It's also here that you'll be introduced to the eponymous Ruiner Machine Pistol, something that does a fine job of being a default bullet spitter, but it's not really long before you'll be needing to pick up weapons featuring a little bit more kick. By the end of the level though, you should have a pretty good idea of what you're in for. Wind your way through some high-tech hellhole, murder everyone and everything that stands in your way, and when you meet the big cheese at the other end, murder that guy too. As you can imagine, Ruiner lives or dies on the strength of that core gameplay loop. Enter, engage, kill everything, repeat. It's a formula that comes with a understandable fear of becoming stale fairly quickly. It's gonna need a little something to keep it interesting. So with that in mind, what does Ruiner bring to the table? Abilities, really. Abilities like pulses that can stun the enemy, barriers that can slow anything that passed through it down, or maybe you're more partial to using an overload for some enhanced strength, speed, and damage. The kicker with these, however, is that all three exist within a single category, so you'll have to pick what suits your particular playstyle best. What some may find irksome, however, is that many of these abilities are actually locked off to begin with, restricting early experimentation. In order to unlock these abilities and access to the subsequent upgrades, you'll have to acquire enough karma to level yourself up. For me, this led to leaning on the first thing available. The first thing I was allowed to use in the opening level, in fact. The shield. I mean, why wouldn't I? It absorbs attacks, and even better, if you upgrade it, it'll reflect projectiles and even deal damage to an enemy if you charge into them. The problem with the other abilities when they unlocked was that I already had a working playstyle and having to experiment with another variable would inevitably lead to fumbling, embarrassing deaths. Ruiner rates your performance, by the way, grading you on each battle and awarding bonus karma for the rank, so you can imagine my reluctance to screw with a playstyle that has me taking minimal deaths and landing those higher ranks on a more regular basis. As for other ability categories, experimentation seemed a more viable option. Unlocking later into the game, I didn't have that pre-existing bias, that pre-existing preference, and eventually I settled on hacking enemies to fight on my behalf with the additional option of a shock launcher, which stuns unshielded enemies caught within its radius, leaving them very vulnerable to a vicious pummeling. There's also passive upgrades here, giving you a boost to things like dashing, ammo capacity, weapon durability, health, energy, and the less passive option of a reflex booster, slowing down the action at a button press, handy for when Runa gets hectic, which, believe me, it frequently does. Once you're done with the tutorial, though, Ruiner breaks up the unadulterated violence and takes the intensity down a few notches with a trip to the rundown district of South Rancock. I'd actually say that spending time here was probably one of my favorite parts of Ruiner. It almost feels like a completely different game. You get to wander the streets and get a feel for what this world is like. Overhear conversations, hack holographic cats, and even strike up the occasional conversation with a few interesting characters. I should probably come back to that cat hacking line, shouldn't I? Turns out that they're actually some form of surveillance system, disguised as cats. I mean, it's obvious, really. 
but if you talk to a particular NPC, you'll get a request to hack a number of them on her behalf. Why do this, you may ask? Well, it actually gives you access to special weapons lockers during the next set of levels, giving you a little bit of an edge in battle. Another thing worth noting during your time here is that the music is a drastic shift from the sound of harsh electronic violence that usually defines the main levels. It's pretty relaxing, diffusing the stress of bygone battles and lending quite a dash of atmosphere to the district itself. It pretty much got to the point where about midway through one of the regular levels, I was actually pining for a return to the streets of South Rangkok. I actually liked it that much. It feels like the anchor that grounds the ruiner experience. With each brief return, a few little things actually change. Stories overheard move forward, the police presence gets heavier, the cats multiply, and it just gave me a little something extra to fight for. I mean, the whole bad guys have your brother motivation is fine and everything, but it helps to have some stakes in the world that you're playing in, and these little sections certainly make you empathize with the residents of this downtrodden section of city. Makes it feel like what you're doing is in some way gonna benefit them in the long run. I'd say that if there's only one significant letdown about this particular part of Ruiner, it's that there isn't more of it to explore. I'd just love to spend more time lost in those streets. Before long though, it's back to the grind. Goons need killing, brothers need rescuing, bosses need toppling. Ruiner in that regard is actually pretty short. The meat of the action taking place across three distinct environments, each consisting of several stages, a mini boss at the end of each, with a big boss reserved for that environment's final encounter. Traversal through the levels themselves is actually pretty linear, not a lot of opportunities to get lost, and what little diversions there actually are usually lead to a weapon locker or a box full of bonus karma. If anything, the structure of these levels reminds me more of classic side-scrolling beat-em-ups than anything else. It's very eager to move you along to the next big section where you'll take on another group of goons. Even the way you pick up new weapons from downed enemies reminds me of those classic beat-em-ups, because you don't reload them, once they run dry, you just discard them. Same goes for melee weapons, when they run out of durability, you're done. The only thing that seemed to be missing was the ability to pick up random objects like trash cans and launch them at the head of the nearest goon, but oh well, opportunity missed I guess. By the end of that bout of stages, however, you'll have engaged Nerve, leader of the creeps in one-on-one -on -one combat, roundly kicked his ass, taken his badass sword for your own, eliminated your target, and become the new boss of the gang itself. It's a shame then that Ruiner doesn't really do much with the creeps after that. They do turn up, but largely as corpses in future levels. I feel like it was a little bit of a missed opportunity. It would have been nice to call in a horde of rampaging gang members to help you out once in a while. Leaving the street gang behind, however, you soon move on to Hansa Assembly, where you'll encounter new enemies, bringing with them bigger health pools, bigger guns, the ability to dash, shields, all sorts of things, just to make your survival an utter pain in the arse. I say pain in the arse because, if I'm gonna be honest, I'm not sure that I'm actually all that great at playing Ruiner. It's one of those things that you don't want to have to admit, that you're probably bad at playing a video game when you spend a significant part of your week actually playing video games. I'm not sure what it was, but there was just something about the movement here that felt off to me. I'm used to twin-stick style games being pretty fast and fluid when it comes to navigating a level in the heat of battle, but here it just seems a little sluggish. Slower than what I'm typically used to. Maybe it helps convey the weightiness of the player character. Either way, something was throwing me off. Another thing I consistently managed to screw up was dashing out of the way. Now, that I probably have a better excuse for. Invincibility frames. Ruiner doesn't seem to have that many. I mean, sure, you can dash through an enemy, but I'm pretty sure you can't dash through projectiles, which was a habit that I found a little hard to shake. Now to begin with, that wasn't much of a problem. The creep enemies don't really have anything particularly crazy going on, they try to hit you, they try to shoot you, they occasionally try to blow themselves up in your face, all fairly manageable stuff, but as the game progresses and new enemy types are introduced, now you're dealing with enemies that can dash, teleport, have heavier weaponry, and also take a fair amount of punishment. 
My issues with the movement and the dashing and remembering to throw up my damn shield were now magnified and naturally death followed death followed death followed death. In my defense though, Ruiner is not a particularly easy game. One that's very swift to punish mistakes. If only I was a little quicker at learning from them. Now, on the flip side, there's something in here that I can easily say is just 100% weapons grade bullshit. Quite possibly one of the most wretched boss fights I've ever had to endure in a good long while. Calling it a fight, in fact, seems a bit misleading. It feels more accurate to regard it as more of a dice roll. So halfway through the game, somewhere in the Hansa complex, you run up against a psychotic AI called Mother. It fires a giant fuck you laser at you and the only way to survive is if you throw up a shield. Now this thing goes off for a good long while so you have to keep that shield active but the force of the damn thing also throws you back. If you stood in the middle of the T-junction then whoops, guess what, you get fried on the laser grid blocking the exit. Okay, clearly not the way to do it. Next try. Let's try going left, and now I'm being inexplicably pinned in the corner, getting bounced around like a pinball. Oh wait, there goes my shield, and I'm dead. Again. Now, multiply this scenario about, I don't know, because I actually lost count, but let's just say 20 times over. Then you can probably come close to imagining the sheer, brain-boiling frustration that I was going through. So much so that I was genuinely close to putting my head through the monitor. Not my gamepad, not my fist, my fucking head. Eventually, I beat it. Through sheer force of will, I beat it. But not once did I feel I was in control. Not once did I feel like I wasn't at the mercy of some kind of RNG. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that this has to be some kind of physics bug because there's no way in hell someone can create a sequence like that and think it's okay. Because it isn't. It was so goddamn aggravating to get through, it nearly soured me on the entire game going forward. Thankfully, it never reaches those giddy heights again, but man, I just had to take a rest because absolutely nothing good comes from playing a difficult game in a continuous state of white hot rage. It's fortunate then that blasting goons in the face with a future shotgun is still pretty damn satisfying. Did I ever mention that some of the weapons in this game are actually pretty freaking cool? I mean, to start with, you get the consumer grade stuff, handguns, SMGs, assault rifles, but by the time you get to the back half of Ruiner, you get to wield some fairly wondrous stuff. On top of the things I've already mentioned, there's miniguns, flamethrowers, railguns, sonic electronic ball breakers, I'm pretty sure there's even a goddamn freeze ray in here somewhere. I'm just happy that Ruiner chooses to embrace the inherent badassery of sci-fi weaponry because sometimes you just need that kind of violent catharsis of using something obscenely OTT to turn some pain in the ass murk into a fine red mist. During that same back half of game however, it felt like Ruiner was running out of ways to vary up the standard encounters. I mean sure, the enemies were getting more formidable with each stage, but all it really felt like for the most part was that they were simply getting bigger guns and a change of costume. It's not that Ruiner doesn't do anything at all to shake up its own formula, it's that it doesn't quite shake it up enough. A big missed opportunity in my opinion would be the lack of things like stage hazards. The most common things you'll see on a regular basis are things like helicopter searchlights where you'll be fired upon if you're spotted, or health and energy sapping units that occasionally spawn into the arena. Ruiner does dabble in other kinds of hazards, but it seems reluctant to stick with them, most of them turning out to be one and done type deals, such as lasers cutting across the arenas, or the inclusion of a very, very awkward barrier maze later on. The creativity on that front seems more reserved for sections such as the big boss battles, and even then they're in fairly short supply and occasionally seem a little iffy in execution. The battle against Traffic King is an interesting one, starting off with a chase where all you can do is run and avoid getting stuck on level clutter due to a shield. After that it settles down into an arena confrontation where you need to overload four cooling towers and catch him in the crossfire for a chance to do damage. 
A neat idea marred by a few little irritations, such as the barriers that raise during the fight, supposedly to keep from cheesing the same old route. If only they were a little bit more visible. They had an unfortunate habit of blending into the surroundings, occasionally catching me unawares and leading to a chunk of damage being taken from Traffic King's seemingly unending barrage of bullets. Despite it being nowhere near as terrible as that infamous boss battle I mentioned earlier, it still seems to be missing that particular something that makes for a truly satisfying battle. Maybe it's the sense that I still don't feel entirely in control of the outcome that those barriers could randomly raise because the game's decided it's time for me to lose. Ultimately, I just felt a little exhausted by the gameplay of Ruiner. It's a bit of a grind. Outside of those boss battles, I pretty much default to an optimal strategy over and over, and it's probably fortunate then that Ruiner is as short as it is, but even then, some parts feel like it's kind of padding itself out. Take the Hyperloop, for example. It's a pretty cool sci-fi transport system that has you zipping down a track at ludicrous speed. It's a neat visual, but that's all it is. A transition between sections that requires you to hold down the button for a while so you don't feel left out, I guess? I get having something like that in the game once, but several times more, without any real variation, it just feels like the game is admitting it's kind of ran out of ideas. And that's even before you run into the techno zombies. Oh yeah, spoilers by the way. From this point onwards, I pretty much talk about the final areas and final boss battle. Not to mention completely spoiling the story, which I've avoided talking about up until now. So feel free to skip to the timecode below if you want to experience all of that stuff for yourself first. Cool? Cool. In that case, welcome to... So it turns out that deep beneath Rankok, there's a server farm for a virtual reality system ran by heaven, only instead of computers, it runs on humans. Some volunteer, some don't. All of them are pretty much buggered, because something has gone horribly, horribly wrong. The system is spewing out corpses faster than a wood chipper at a murder convention, and Mother, the AI we had a memorable altercation with earlier, has quite clearly gone mad, because it's not just any old AI, oh no, it's an AI powered by a pair of psychotic twins. Because of course it is. Because of course it is. So you already know my track record with boss fights up until this point, and I'll just say that if it's not possible for me to blow something up that will make the battle a little easier to manage, then why in the ever-loving fuck would you put a damage indicator on the damn thing? It nearly drove me insane, because I was convinced that these things were destroyable. They're called angels, secondary AIs that continuously spew out hosts, or as I like to call them, techno-zombies. I've blown them up in the past, it's doable, but for some reason in this battle, they seem to operate under a different set of rules. No matter how many lasers I blasted at them, no matter how many bullets I spewed, they just refused to explode. I have to admit, my frustration stemmed from the assumption that I needed to take those things out to open up a window for me to damage the main boss. You know, kind of like Traffic King. Turns out that that was completely wrong. I could just attack Mother head on, but even then, I was confused about those angel units. I mean, I get the need for something that spawns enemies that will harass you around the arena, but why string me along thinking it's worth even blowing them up? It's just a lot of time and effort, much better spent wailing on the boss itself. Anyway, after many labored attempts, I finally managed to kick Mother to the curb, and it's the moment that I've been waiting for, because for the vast majority of the game, I've been chasing a pod. A pod containing masky protagonist's poor hostage brother. So I go to open the thing, and it gets a little weird. There's this little scene that looks like a nod to Akira, and all of a sudden, I'm in a heaven jumpsuit in the middle of a completely different place. And wouldn't you know it, it's time for a big ol' revelation, because it turns out your brother was actually the boss of heaven all along. So, long story short, I guess there was nobody in the pod. It was just bait to lead you to the people that had conspired against the boss of heaven. The people that were using you to take him out in the first place. That was an attempt that failed because a hacker called her stepped in and saved you at the last moment. Only it turns out that your little hacker buddy was working with Heaven 
all along. And now she's decided to set you free here to go and kill the boss. If that was always her intent, then why didn't she just let you do that in the first place? Well, it's not very well explained, but my best guess is she probably wanted the other big plays of heaven out of the way first. Also, it turns out that she's not human, because her face explodes. They don't really elaborate much on that one. I, I figured that might be the case, but they just leave it hanging there, like a fart in an elevator. Regardless, she slaps a death timer on your head for shits and giggles, and it's time to survive an onslaught of pretty much every goon level enemy you've had to fight in this game so far. Wave after wave after wave, each kill, topping up the death timer until finally, they just kind of run out of guys. Seriously, they just stop coming. Now this is where I was expecting some kind of epic overblown brother on brother showdown to happen. That extra time you managed to get on the clock all coming down to this final fight. You gotta defeat him before that thing hits zero and your head explodes. Only that's not what happens. Instead, the boss just walks back into the arena, an arena with force fields locking you in, I might add, and just lets you kill him. That's it. The end. I'm not sure if I've ever been as comprehensively blue-balled by the ending to a game as I have by this one. It's just completely and utterly baffling to me. So yeah, on that stunning set of revelations, I'm, I'm still not entirely sure what to make of Ruiner. It certainly has its moments, but for me most of those moments seem to be front-loaded during that first half of the game. After that, it starts to feel a bit like diminishing returns. Maybe it's just me, but Ruiner doesn't feel quite as tight as it should be, to the point where every now and again I was just confused over how I managed to die. And that kind of feedback is vital for the player, because if they don't understand the circumstances, then they can't learn from them. Ultimately, Ruiner left me a little disappointed. It started off strong and just seemed to lose momentum as you got further into it. Is it a bad game? Nah, it's alright. If you're simply after a nice looking cyberpunk themed game with some challenging if occasionally frustrating combat, then there are certainly worse choices than this. I'd just say it's probably a good idea to hold off for a sale. In any case, I'll probably dip back into Ruiner at some point in the future, take advantage of the ability to replay past levels with full progress, but until then, I'm just gonna have one last wanderer around the streets of South Rancock. Hacking cats, talking to crazy people, taking it easy. This has been Mr. Icarus. Thank you very much for watching. Icarus out.